Hello everyone, this is Lisa Mendoza. I am bringing you a tutorial for this super cute ice cream um, greeting card. All of these supplies here that I used are from my Planners Anonymous subscription kit that came this month and the theme is Milk Bar, which is super cute. And if any of you know me personally, you know that um, I love the vintage um, and 50s aesthetic. So this is just right up my alley. I loved it so much. So I created this card and I thought I'd go through a tutorial. So a couple of things that I used um, from the Planners Anonymous subscription kit is the stamps. Um, I used the papers, um, this pink watercolor paper, and then this um, yellowish, kind of mustard yellowish um, watercolor paper as well. And then again, as I mentioned, the stamp set here. And then um, this is one of the quote cards that comes in the kit. Now, I didn't want to cut up my original quote cards that came in the kit, and so I downloaded a subscriber freebie, um, and it's the... Uh, the digital version of the quote cards. So I just printed this out in my home printer <clears throat> and I can make now a bajillion cards because I can um, print this out anytime. <laughs> so this is just a great little shaker card. So I'm going to walk you through. So those are the planners anonymous items um, that I used to create this card, but I also used some other optional things. Um, I used um, thin um, metal dies with my Anna Griffin Impress um, electronic die cutting machine. So that's why um, I have these kind of um, stitched details um, on my borders. So you don't have to have this. It's just something that I just thought um, looks super cute. And so I like using dies because I don't have to measure um, with my paper trimmer and things like that. But these very simple rectangles are very e easy to cut. They're an eighth of an inch um, difference in size all the way around and boom, you have two layers. <laughs> so another thing that I used is this embossing folder. I also use this with my die cutting machine. And I just thought it was a great, would make a great um, waffle cone print. And this isn't the exact one that I used because I wanted to change it up when I recreate this card. So the exact one that I had used for this card um, looked like this. And I can't remember where I got this, but something's telling me maybe Joanne's, I'm not sure. And then this one, I'm not sure either. Maybe Amazon. I, I don't keep track of the embossing folders. Um, and then these um, rectangular dies, these are both from Queen and Company, and this one's from their foundation set number three, and this one's from their foundation set number eight. So I typically keep these together because I use them so often because they nest so perfectly. And then I'm also using Copic markers, Copic sketch markers. So um, you can use any markers you have. You can use colored pencils. You could use um, any other alcohol uh, marker, any other marker, watercolors. I mean, whatever, just use your imagination. So I just want to walk you through this. So let's go ahead and go through it. Oh, another thing I'm using is an envelope die, but I'll show you that when I get there. And then this is another one of Planners Anonymous um, beautiful papers that came with the kit. And then I also adorned it with a faux <laughs> postage stamp that also came in the extra sticker kit that came um, this month. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to kind of put some stuff aside and clean up my area here. So I'm going to start by stamping. So we'll just set this over here. I'm going to use these fantastic um, milk bar stamps. So in the subscription kit, you get so much. You get three um, different sizes of washi. It's all themed. You get papers, you get a matching pen, you get a stamp set, you get quote cards, you get die cuts, you get a mystery item, um, acetate, vellum. I mean, it's just such a wonderful creative kit um, for anyone who likes to not only plan, but also create um, other things like greeting cards. Um, or instead, if you're not into making cards, this could be a dashboard for your planner. You could easily punch it on the side and insert into your planner and make it whatever size you want. So the technique for this card can be used really for anything. You can make just even just the shake or make it into a bookmark or, you know, anything like that. 
that. So the possibility is endless. I just wanted to give you some tips for the technique in creating a shaker card. Another thing that I want to mention is I also used my silhouette portrait to um, to die cut um, this original stamped image. So I used my pick scan mat with my silhouette portrait to cut this out beautifully. Now you can um, fussy cut it yourself with a pair of scissors, um, but I like to take it easy on myself. And so I just put it into my machine, my machine with my pick scan mat and created an offset and it just cut beautifully cut perfectly i love it so if you don't have matching dies for particular stamp sets that you love you can always use your pick scan mat with your electronic cutter um, and it'll cut your original images all right i think that covers um, everything that i used so i'm gonna go ahead and grab a acrylic block i'm gonna grab two use these two and then I'm also gonna grab um, my Momento um, ink in tuxedo black um, this is the one that I use whenever I'm Copic coloring because this is Copic or alcohol um, marker friendly so this is the one that I like to use and then I'm gonna grab just a um, a piece of cardstock like this. I pre-cut them. This is normally letter size cardstock and I pre-cut them. Um, I cut in half um, long and then I cut in half short um, on the short side and then I get four um, panels. And so these I love having handy um, in my card making area so I can just grab one and, and go <laughs> instead of having to um, pause and cut. So and then I also have my card bases um, scored and folded um, also off to the side just so I can grab them whenever I want because I really, really enjoy making cards. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just put these clear stamps on my acrylic blocks. And I'm going to use this um, waffle cone image here. And then I'm going to use, um, I could either use this one and this one or just two of these. Let me see, what did I do? Here. I'm trying to remember I think under here is a double scoop and I placed this scoop on top um, because I wanted the lines to be different I didn't want to repeat the same pattern so we'll go ahead and do that again um, I just remembered that that's how I had done it so I'm gonna use both of these images alrighty so I'm gonna start um, with my cone and I'll go ahead and place this on there as well. So I love clear stamps because they don't take up a lot of room in your craft stash. Um, all right, so sometimes I use a Misty um, stamp positioning tool, but in this case I don't because I'm going to color it and do all kinds of other stuff and I don't need it to be in, ex in an exact um, position. All right, so we're going to get started with stamping this beautiful image. So let's see. This is really easy. Now, if I were not layering the cone and the ice cream um, scoops, um, these are three different pieces that I use. So if I wasn't doing that, I would have to mask off part of my cone so that the um, scoop rests in the right place. But I'm not doing that, so I don't have to worry about that. That will be for another day. Um, the masking part so that just look at these stamps they just stamp beautifully and then I'll need a double scoop and if you're a mass producer then you would just stamp this a couple of times um, so you can do it all at once and then I need my single scoop And the way I clean my stamps is just with a microfiber cloth. I don't get too crazy. I just um, do it nice and simple and it seems to work. Okay, so I'm gonna get this and then stamp this on here. Perfect. So there we have the images that we need for our card. I'm gonna give it a few seconds and let it dry so I can start coloring. All right, so the Copic colors that I used, you can use any colors you want, but if you do wanna follow along and use Copics, then I will share with you what I used. So for the cone, I'm using E33 and E11. 
Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do um, the light color first and then the dark color. Now, I am no expert colorer. <laughs> I just started with Copics, and so you're going to have to be really easy with me because I may not put the shading in the right place, but if you ask me, this looks super cute, and I don't think that anybody is going to... Um, dissect it and see where my shadows came from and all that stuff so not worried about it so what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to um color the entire image with this e11 Just like that easy peasy and don't worry if you go out of the lines because a white gel pen will fix that just like white out and no one will know <laughs> so awesome all right and I'm just kind of flicking the outside just so that I don't have such a harsh line there this is actually gonna be covered with the ice cream cone so I'm not too worried about it um, and then I'm just gonna create a quick um, Kind of shadow on this side and then a kind of a quick shadow right here and then maybe um, towards the bottom of the cone all right and I actually could stop there I mean that really is enough dimension I could get away with just using e11 um, but since I want a little more um, definition I'm gonna go ahead and use um, e33 and I'm just gonna kind of um, put a little bit more in here Just a little bit, and I'm just gonna kind of blend that out. Tell you, I'm no expert, but I do think um, this looks cute. Again, um, I know I'm going out of the lines a little bit, but I'm not worried about it because um, I have a white gel pen. That fixes everything. All right, so I'm done really with E33. I'm just gonna use this E11 just to kind of blend that in a little bit. So it's great because Copics um, really um, make it look like you know what you're doing <laughs> I think that's funny and it's just so fun and so therapeutic that's what I love about these kits is they're just really therapeutic so just a little more dimension just like that that's it for the cone then we're gonna go over to the ice cream scoops. Now I chose pink. I just realized that this was for um, another project that I did with this ice cream and I also did a brown scoop. So this is what I had used for the brown scoop but I'm not gonna use it today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use pink because pink is my favorite. So really I'm only gonna be using these four colors. So I'm using R83 and RV32. And I just wanna remember what order I use them in. Okay, so I think, okay, so this one was all over. All right, so I'm going with, in with R83, and I'm, again, just going to kind of um, go over the whole thing. Just kind of put some color down on the whole thing. It's okay if I accidentally go out of the line. <laughs> we can fix that after. All right. And then um, I'm going to go in with the RV32. And I just, again, no pro. So I just kind of go over these lines like this. No big deal. Nice and easy. And 
even maybe a little bit here. Maybe a little bit here. Just blend that out a little bit. All right, and that's really it. Uh, do I wanna make it a little bit darker? Maybe I'll just go over one more pass here so it's not so light. All right, I think that's fine. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and color um, this other one. So I could do a chocolate chip, but you know what, I don't want to, I want it all pink. Is that bad? I can't remember which one I did first, but it doesn't matter. Easy peasy, right? Super easy. This one's actually a different color, but I don't mind. I did the opposite before. So as you can see, it doesn't matter. Don't be too hard on yourself when it comes to coloring. I think that's perfect. All right, so we have two um, different scoops. So now I'm ready to take this to my pick scan mat, but before I go to my computer, we'll go ahead and, and do um, the quote card part. We'll do cutting down of the paper and, um, and assembling most of it actually. All right, so we're gonna put this aside and then we're done with our Copic markers. So we can put those away as well. We're done with our stamps done with that okay so I'm gonna use let's see I might have to change it up because um, let's see might have to change up the colors a little bit I got to see what colors I have available to use oh here's another um, background that I had made. Maybe I can use this. So the reason why I didn't use this in my original version is because in my original version, I'm using all Planners Anatomist papers. And here, this was a metallic pink that I had in my stash. And then this is a craft colored cardstock that I had. And then I took some metallic watercolor paints and I just splashed um, over the So top. I think I might just use this. I want to save my papers for other, um, other, projects. So here's the pink that I used in my original design. This is the back of the um, Milk Bar Scene paper. So if you just go to the back, there's um, that beautiful pink watercolor. So that's what I used with my larger um, metal die. I used that for the background piece. And then um, I used, let's see, Oh, it was so hard to use this, but it's okay because I get two copies of um, two of each of the papers in my kit. So this is um, the menu that they had in the subscription kit. It's so cute, so retro, so awesome. And so on the back is this, and this is what I used for um, the smaller um, rectangle. And I used my die to cut that, and I also used um, an embossing folder to create the dimension. So I think we're going to skip that part, um, and we're just going to use this base right here that I have on hand because it's very beautiful. Um, but you know, feel free to dig into your Planners Anonymous um, kit papers um, to make the card that. Um, suits your style so I'm gonna go ahead and use this so now that I have this already I just need to prepare uh, my quote card um, sentiment that goes here so um, as I had mentioned before I printed out um, the quote cards the digital um, quote card 
download that's available on the planners anonymous website for subscribers so there's all these beautiful um sentiments so um i used um ice cream solves everything so maybe i'll use something different just to kind of change it up all righty so i'm gonna go ahead into my kit i love this organization this is actually an original idea by itsy crafty and i'll go ahead and link her below as also so you can watch this video if you're interested in organizing your planners anonymous subscription kits this way um but it just holds everything all nice together in a very affordable four by six album that you can get on amazon i believe i buy them by the dozen so um here are my quote cards this is one that I had um, taken that same um, gold metallic watercolor that I had splashed um, this background with. Um, I had put it here, you know, because I was just kind of undecided. Okay, so here we go. So this is the original quote card. We're going to go ahead and use it so I can show you how I did that. All right, so let's clear all this out of the way. Okay just for the sake of time, I don't want to print another um, digital version of the quote cards. I'm just going to go ahead and use this. All right, so I'm going to use my smaller paper trimmer. And I just slit this apart. <laughs> I just literally just sliced it apart. So let's see. I just did it like this very carefully. So far, so good. Um, you could use the quote card. You can just um, trim it down and kind of use it as is, but I like the way it looked all cut up like this. All right, and then you can use this little piece for another project later. Ice cream solves everything. And then I just took my scissors and I just angled it. I just eyeballed it and angled it. So I'll go ahead and do that here. Instead of just cutting it down straight like this, I went ahead and did it at an angle because I thought that would be cute. All right, so there's that one. And let me see, so I kind of want to do it the opposite. I don't know why, but that's what I did. Okay, and then I just added some um, some very thin um, pop-up tape. I believe this one would work just fine. Um, some foam tape on the back to pop that up. Maybe it should have been, a, no, actually this will be fine. I was thinking maybe this might be too, um, too wide, but it's not, it's perfect. I didn't want it to show, so you just gotta be kind of careful. And one more little itty bitty. All right, and that's ready to be put on the card, but we're gonna do our pick scan first. So ice cream solves everything and that came out really cute. There we go. So we'll go ahead and we'll put these aside. Again, we're going to use this base right here. This will end up like this. I love this um, gold splashes in the background. I think that's going to be really cute. I'm so glad I'm using this. All right, so now we do have to go ahead and do our pick scan. Um, so I'm gonna give you just a couple really quick tips on using your pick scan mat with Silhouette. Um, I do have a Cricut, but I have not used their version of a pick scan mat. Um, 
And so I, I just know that their software is really cumbersome. I much prefer Silhouette. So we're gonna go ahead and go with Silhouette here. So if you have a Silhouette, you're in luck. <laughs> Alrighty, so I grabbed um, my PicScan mat, my very linty PicScan mat, and I also grabbed this um, registration page that I printed um, from Silhouette on my home printer. And so the couple of tips that I wanted to give you is, um, you first have to let Silhouette know um, which device you're capturing your image from. So in my case, I use my iPhone. So you print out this registration grid, um, just print it out regular on your printer, it doesn't matter what kind of printer, what kind of paper or anything like that. Um, but the thing that I want you to know and the tip that I want you to know is when you photograph this to import it into Silhouette Studio, um, a lot of people will um, uh, kind of get frustrated with this part because they will shoot this and they shoot it like with this border around um, on the picture. You don't want to do that. You want to get, you do not want to use your zoom. You just want to get closer to the registration page and you want to shoot it to where there um, is no um, side margins in the frame of your photo and you can't go back and edit it. You have to shoot this the right way. So you just take your camera, you um, hover over your registration page and like, for example, if this was my framing area on my iPhone, then I would kind of have it somewhat like <laughs> this. <laughs> so you want to get close enough where there's no border on the outside. That's what Silhouette wants you to do. Um, and don't worry about shadows. If you see my, see my hand shadow, like if you have this hand shadow in the photo, Silhouette doesn't care about that. So don't worry about shadows from your phone or from your hand or anything like that. What they want to make sure is that all the dots fill the frame. That's the key. So then you upload this into Silhouette Studio. They say you only have to do it once. That is not true. I have to do it every time um, I do a PicScan project. So another tip is I went ahead and I photographed this and I keep it on my desktop, the JPEG file. And so every time that I have to do a PicScan project, instead of reshooting this, uploading it to my camera, I just use the same photograph that I originally took and import it into Silhouette Studio. So I don't have to shoot it again and, um, and transfer the photo from my iPhone to my computer over and over and over again. Instead, I just have a registration page that I've already shot from the same device that I'm gonna be shooting um, my PicScan mat on. So hopefully that makes sense, especially for those of you who are struggling with the PicScan mat. But um, so I can really just throw this away because I have my file already. I don't plan on upgrading my phone anytime soon. And I only use my phone um, for capturing um, the images on my PicScan mat. So that's that. And then when it comes to the PicScan mat, which I'm gonna do right now. So here it is in its full glory. I use a silhouette portrait. Um, I gave my cameo to my sister, so she uses that now. Um, and I really love the portrait. It's small, compact, lightweight, and I can just, it, it just doesn't take up a lot of room. And pretty much I can do everything just on the smaller mat. I don't need the large 12 by 12. I don't do like a lot of iron-ons and things like that. And I find that when I print my own planner stickers, um, I always use eight and a half by 11 sticker paper. So, which the portrait accommodates. So it's just perfect. So anyway, you're gonna go ahead and um, I take off this protective part on my PicScan mat. And as you can see, it's nice and linty and dirty. So <laughs> excuse that. Um, and then you wanna put your image, you can put it anywhere on the mat. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to be um, right reading like this. It could be sideways, it could be whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it right here. Now, um, another tip is you can't move this once you shoot your photograph because Silhouette is going to create the offset and cut around um, specifically where this is placed when I capture a photograph of this mat. So once you set it down and take a picture, do not move it, otherwise you will have a miscut. So all of this around here are just registration marks. Um, the 
the dot um, registration photo that I told you that I upload to Silhouette Studio. That's going to tell the software um, the kind of camera you use and kind of the ratio so that when it brings this into the software, it's very accurate. So that's really important. So now when I am photographing this, I photograph it just as you see in the frame of this video. So you have to have, in this case, a border. You're not gonna zoom in, or not, not zoom in, I'm sorry. You're not gonna get close to the image like you did with the registration dots. You are gonna make sure there's a border all the way around just like this. This would be the perfect framing. Um, and speaking of, let me go ahead and show you the perfect framing um, for capturing this because I'm using my iPhone to capture this video. So let me go ahead and show you. So see how I have a little bit of a border um, on the bottom? So you can't have that. So if I want no, no border, I'm gonna have this on a flat surface and I'm gonna zoom, not zoom in, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting, we can't use zoom when we do this, but I'm gonna take the picture more like this, you know, to where there's um, no uh, space around it. You know what I mean? No other obstructing um, objects or anything, okay? And then for the pic scan mat, I'm gonna photograph it just like this with this border around so that the entire pic scan mat is captured. So once I have that, um, I use Apple products, so it's really easy for me. I just airdrop my images to my Mac and they're there. But it, um, if you don't use Apple products, um, then just get these images to your computer however you would, you know, email or text or I don't know. I don't know how other people do it, but I use airdrop because it's nice and easy. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the computer. I'm gonna photograph this, um, airdrop it to my computer and bring it into Silhouette Studio. And I'm just gonna quickly go through what I do. This is not a PicScan tutorial, although I will give you a couple of tips um, regarding PicScan. All right, so let's go to the computer. Go ahead and go to Silhouette Studio. I do have the Business Edition, but the PicScan um, option is available with the standard free version as well so my menu items may look a little bit different but it's pretty much the same stuff so let's go ahead and i'm going to click on the pic scan icon right here and then um now uh for the sake of this video i went ahead and i used my ipad to take the picture of the pic scan mat of this particular card so my iphone here is no longer going to be applicable because i used my ipad because I wanted to go through the whole process with you guys. So let me show you um, my photos. So this is the photo I took with my iPad of the um, calibration dots. Okay, so you see there's no border around it. And then my mat looks like this. Okay, so there's a border around it. So we're going to see if this works. <laughs> here goes a test. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead down here. I'm going to add the calibration dots. Okay, so I'm going to go here, and uh, those two are saved as HEICs, so I'm going to have to change the JPEGs. Okay, so I'll have to change my settings on my iPad so that that doesn't happen. But let's go ahead and open these two. We'll save them as JPEGs really quick. All right. This is good to know because if this happens to you, you will have to convert. So I'm just opening them up in my default um, photo um viewer on my Mac, which is happens to be preview. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll save as, but let me just, oh, export. Okay. So I'm going to export this image as a JPEG and I'm going to go ahead and put it in downloads like it was. So I'm going to save that and then save this one as well. Export as a JPEG to downloads. Perfect. All right. So now I should be able to bring it in. So I'm bringing in the one with the dots, which is this one right here. Please work. <laughs> it works for me all the time, but of course we're on video, so it might not work, but we shall see. Perfect, it worked. Okay, so you can see this profile is for my Apple iPad Pro. Okay, so now that I have the proper calibration, um, this is gonna work beautifully, I hope. Now, in order to, to print out that dotted calibration test card, as they call it here in the software, I would click right here and it would show it here and I would just print this. I would go file, print, and print that dotted um, diagram. So that's how I would get that. You would show calibration test card right here. So anyway, I brought that in, worked out good, no errors were given. So now I'm gonna import the PicScan image which is the image of what is on my mat. 
So I'm going to double click here and you see it's bringing it in. All right. So here it is. Look at how beautiful this is. See, it worked flawlessly just like it's supposed to. <laughs> this is perfect. This is exactly what I see on my mat. Now, again, as I mentioned, you do not want to move any elements from your mat um, at this point. Otherwise, it's not going to cut correctly So because it's not going to know where your image is. So now I am not going to go through um, silhouette and how to trace and do all of that stuff. I'm just going to do it kind of quickly. Um, maybe you can leave in the comments if you want me to go more in depth. But really, I'm just going to go to my trace panel here. I'm going to select a trace area. Um, it picked up some trace images right here by the little swatches that I created, but I'm not worried about that. I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that. But I just want to trace the outer edge because I want to create an offset. Okay, so now let's see. Um, I'm going to go ahead from here. I'm going to go to my offset panel, which is this star, and I'm going to say offset. And my go to offset is either 0 0.040 or 0 0.050. We'll do 0 0.040. And you see how it created, I'll go ahead and zoom in, it created this um, outline around my cone. That's exactly what I want. I want it to cut that because it's going to look like a die cut. <laughs> All right, and just so you know, this doesn't go against um, Planners Anonymous's angel policy, the copyright policy, because I am, I am not uh, scanning or taking a picture of this and then printing it and creating a reproduction. I am just bring it in, bringing it into silhouette, silhouette software in order to tell Silhouette where to cut my original image. So that's the key, okay? So I just wanna make sure um, that you guys are aware of those differences. This red so, line here um, from my original trace, I need to get rid of that because I don't want Silhouette to cut right there. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's see, so that's that one. This is this one, I'm gonna go ahead and delete. Perfect. Let me zoom out and make sure everything went okay. So now um, I have a couple of areas um, in here that I obviously don't need to cut. I also have a couple of areas right here within the scoop that I can delete. Um, this part is very simple. So you could do it um, either, there's two ways that I can do this if I look at it. So if I were to use my eraser tool just to erase these lines here, um, it would work just fine because it's not going to erase um, my image because it knows it's a pic scan image and you cannot alter it. So that's wonderful. So I'm just going to erase these lines like that okay and I could do the same here or I could go ahead and click on this right click go to release compound path and then delete these um, internal lines like that okay so those are two different ways you can do it when you're using your pic scan mat so everything else looks fantastic so I'm going to go ahead and send this to my silhouette machine and I'm inserting the mat the pic scan mat with my images on it again I'm not moving my images and I'm just going to click send because um, silhouette already knows I'm cutting um, very heavy cardstock and then my lines here are perfect this is exactly the way I want it to be cut so I'm going to go ahead and say send you could probably hear my machine in the background it's um reading the registration marks so that it knows exactly where my image is all right no problems there all right my auto blade is adjusting to the right depth And now it's cutting. Look at it. Beautiful. Now my machine goes over twice because I'm using 120 pound hard stock. Actually, no, this one's 100 pounds. done this several times but I still find it very exciting every time. Yes. Oh look at that. Look, 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 look at this guys. Isn't that beautiful? Okay we got that. We've got our double scoops. We've got our single scoop and we need to do one more thing before we leave the silhouette. So now that we've done that 
um, I need to do one more thing because I'm creating a shaker card, remember? <laughs> okay, so this element here, I'll go ahead and zoom in for you guys. Oops, actually, I don't need that anymore. I can go ahead and delete that if I want to because I don't need it. And again, once I've taken the stuff off my map, this file is, is useless now because um, I've taken my cut items already off the mat and they'll no longer ever be in the exact same position. <laughs> so um, now what I'm gonna do is this right here, this outline for this one scoop, I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy. I'm gonna go into a new um, mat here. I'm gonna paste it right here. Okay, so that's my outline. That's the outer part of my single scoop that I'm gonna create my shaker with. Okay, so now what I could have done is I could have duplicated it and if this white piece of paper were longer or bigger, I could have done it all at the same time. But I really didn't have enough space, enough um, empty space on this little piece of paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it in a second run. But really, if you had a whole piece of paper here or more space, you could do this next process, process on the same sheet in the same run. All right. So for my shaker, I want it, I want my silhouette to cut out of white cardstock. I want it to cut this outline, but I also want it to cut an internal offset. Okay, and that's what's gonna create my frame. You can see it right here. It's perfect. Actually, this setting um, 0.125 is perfect. So I'm gonna apply that. And that is my shaker. This is my um, shaker piece. And then on the inside here is gonna be a little piece of um, acetate. Um, I'm gonna put some foam around. Oh, actually, I'm not gonna use foam. I'm gonna show you another trick. Um, this is perfect. So now I'm pretty much done with this shaker element. I just need to duplicate it a couple of times. You can do it a couple of ways. You can just do control copy, control V and uh, copy and pa uh, paste like that. Or what I like to do is I like to take this whole thing like this and I use this duplicate um, tool here and I'm just gonna go like this. Now, the reason why I'm creating so many is because instead of using um, foam tape to create that, uh, that rise in the shaker so that you can add the little bits inside, I prefer, um, this is a much neater way, is I'm just stacking cardstock on top of cardstock to create that height. It just looks a lot cleaner. You don't have to fussy with your uh, fuss with your foam tape showing and not being exact. If you just create a couple copies of this, just use it to stack and I'll show you um, when we continue at the card making table. Um, so I want to cut plenty of these out so that I can create my shaker card. Now this is kind of um, uh, overboard. <laughs> you don't need that many, but um, you kind of get my drift, but I'm going to go ahead and cut. Let's see. We'll say we'll take this one off. I'm going to cut this many. So I'm just going to take my regular mat, put my cardstock on here. It won't have to read the registrations. I won't have to take another picture because I'm not cutting original art. I'm just cutting on white cardstock. So this is going to be very easy. All right. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll meet you at the card table. All right, we're back at the card making table. We have all of our elements to create our shaker card. Look it. So this is what I had just cut on the silhouette. These are all my little outlines for my cone. This is what's gonna create the shaker. Now, this is obviously too high for a shaker, but you get my drift on why I created so many copies <laughs> so that we can elevate. Um, so now one of these, the top one, I'm gonna go ahead and color with my Copic marker that matches um, these elements. And then it's just gonna blend right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. I'm going grab a scrap sheet. And I can just do this with one color. It doesn't really need to have like dimension. This is what's great about Copic markers too. If you don't have the right color paper, you just color it with Copic ink. And then it matches any other um, elements that you colored. All right. So that's the top of my shaker. All right, looks good. Okay, 
All right, so now this is gonna go here. Um, and then we're gonna put this here like this. And then this top one, I'm just gonna put over, you know, kind of like this, okay? And then um, there's gonna be my little shaker um, bits. And then I'm gonna stack several of these like this to add some height and then put my shaker bits and then a piece of acetate and then this and then we'll be done with our card. So you can see how it's gonna to come together. So um, for my acetate, um, I suppose I could cut it, cut it on my silhouette, but I actually like my acetate to be a little bit smaller than this frame, than the outside of this frame. I like it to be a little bit smaller just so that the acetate doesn't poke through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece um, and I'm just gonna, I have a piece of acetate here. I know it's kind of hard to see. Um, and I'm just gonna place this down and I'm gonna take a Sharpie and outline it. And then I'm just gonna cut it by hand a little bit on the inside of the line that I create. Oops, that's gonna get covered, so I'm not worried about that. Now, if you're worried about getting Sharpie on your beautifully colored scoop, then just turn it over. And then if you accidentally um, mark on it, it'll be on the back side. But I'm not worried about that little mark that I accidentally created because this frame is going to go over it. All right, got that. So now I have the outline of my scoop here. And I'm just going to cut just a little bit on the inside of that line so that the um, shape is a little bit smaller. And one thing that I had done when I created my original one is I just took a piece of white cardstock and this made it a little bit easier for me to see um, my line. I'm gonna just cut this really quick. Okay, so just made it a little bit easier for me to see so that I can cut a little bit on the inside and it does not have to be perfect. Just get it cut um, because this is not gonna show. We just don't want it to be outside because if it's outside, of the line then it will show so for me it's much easier just to hand cut this than to run it through the machine you know kind of have to dial in the cut settings and all of that stuff and run it through the machine for me it's much easier let me get this lined up right to just hand cut like this it's just such a little piece all right our acetate is ready so we have our acetate right there let me throw this away All right, we're almost ready. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first, what I like to do first is I just take my top layer and my acetate, and I'm gonna glue these two together like this. The acetate is gonna go under the top of my outline here. So it's gonna go just like this, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and apply glue to the outline here and then rest this acetate right on top. And I really love um, Gina K Connect Glue. So that's what I'm gonna be using. It's um, fast drying and um, it's super strong hold. So I really like it. So we're just gonna use, we gotta use a little bit cause otherwise it'll show on the acetate. I'm gonna make sure I get it all. Okay. And then my acetate is going to go, I just want to make sure, actually, is that right? Yeah. So it's just going to go like this, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right here, and I'm going to take my acrylic block, and I'm just going to set it on top top so that it dries. Oops, sorry, that was out of frame. I'm just going to set it out on top so that it um, dries evenly. All right, so while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this. So I'm gonna put this cone down. Just like that. And then I'm gonna put my double scoop. Yummy. And once you have this technique down, um, you can make a shaker out of anything. Put that down. I think the 
should go over a little bit. The other thing um, I really like about liquid glue is you have a little bit of time to kind of move the position. It's flexible that way. All right, I think that looks really good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this down as well. This is my background image for my shaker. So you could even, you know, if this were a more open image, you could stamp a sentiment in there or whatever you want on your background. Okay, now I didn't correct my coloring right here because the frame is just, is gonna, um, is gonna cover that anyway. I may go back and um, correct some of the cone coloring, but as you can see, that's coming together really beautifully. Okay, so now I'm gonna take, let's see, I'm gonna take one, two, three, I'm gonna take five of these layers because I do want it to be um, a little on the higher side. It's a little, probably, is it an eighth of an inch? Let's see. It's probably about an eighth of an inch um, high because I, I want my bits to move around nice and freely. The lower it is and closer to the card, the less freely they can move around. Now, if you're using sequence, which is very low um, in dimension, you don't have to make it as high, but I'm going to be using like these um, chocolate sprinkles. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do it five high. Now, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some scratch paper. I'm going to make a little puddle of glue right here. And I'm going to use my finger because I think it'll be quicker. really good all right and then I'm just gonna have make sure I have this right as far as which way it goes on my card whether it goes like this or like this nope it goes like this okay so now I'm gonna put glue on the bottom just like that I'm gonna place this right here and now we have the dimension for our shaker. And it looks nice and neat. You know what I mean? If we were using foam, it would not be this neat. Okay. All right. So now I can remove this. Got my little shaker part um, with my acetate there. All right, so now I'm gonna put, um, these are um, shaker, they call them toppings by Queen and Company. They're um, a dye and stamp shop and they make like the best shaker, um, um, shaker making elements. <laughs> I have a lot of their stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these sprinkles. This is from their, um, what kit is this called? the sweet shop um, kit. And so I thought I'd put a couple of these sprinkles. Now, if you ever have trouble with your items that you put in your shaker card sticking or having like a kind of a static cling to your acetate, you can just take a dryer sheet and just kind of rub it in here and rub it on your acetate and then that should um, take away the problem. So I'm gonna put a couple of chocolate sprinkles. These are just polymer clay I think they call it. So I'm gonna put a couple of those guys in there. So cute and yummy. All right. And then I'm gonna put some white. And maybe I'll, instead of, um, in my last card I used white sprinkles, but how about if we use like white, like these little dots. So I kind of want to lay it a little bit flat so that um, they're not on top of each other. I don't want them to create a dent in my acetate. So that looks good. And then you'll be able to tell, like, do you need more um, height? Um, this looks pretty good, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm going to grab this piece, 
And I'm actually going to glue right here because it would be easier for me. Just glue along here. Because we don't want our shaker bits to escape. Alright. And then just place this on top to seal it all up. Oh, pretty. Pretty. Isn't it pretty? All right. Oh. I do have to wait for it to dry a little bit, but you get the idea. So cute. I like a perfect shaker. Look at that. It just looks good. Okay. So now um, we're going to add this. And I just kind of position them. Oh, maybe this should have been pink because this is a browner background. Hmm. Do I want to lay this down? Hmm. I really love this contrast. So I'm not sure if I want to use this. What else can I use? Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Life is sweet is another kind of neutral. <laughs> this would look really cute, but it's kind of big. Um, that doesn't really match. Oh, shake things up would look cute, but I don't know if I want to introduce blue. Okay, so, hmm. Let's see what else I can use. Let's see what else is in here, because I'm sure there are other sentiments within the sticker kit. So let's see. How about if I just add foam tape under this sticker and just pop it up? I think that might be cuter. So let's do that. Let's see. Um, this one might be just right. it out and I didn't lay it all the way down yeah that might work okay and then you know later on I could add another sentiment that says happy birthday add sprinkles or you know something like that we're just kind of MacGyvering through I'm gonna take my little tiny t-square and make sure that this is in the right place need to add a little bit more to the end. Oh, this is good. Now I want to add just a little bit of foam tape um, right here at the beginning because I don't want that to get um, kind of dented in. So I'm going to add just a little sliver. Tweezers. 
perfect. I think that's good. And then we're gonna add this to a card base. Like this. And that will be that. And look at, cute! Look at that! Thank you for joining me.